the Brotherhood was pursuing uh, a loan with the IMF. That is that is true. So people have then accused the Brotherhood of being you know neoliberals. I don't think that's true. I don't think that's a fair or accurate assessment. The Brotherhood was trying to secure an IMF loan, but trying to do so on terms that would have been amenable to the Egyptian common man. And that is why we didn't get an IMF loan. I mean, they had a year to get it done, and they didn't get it done because the Morsi government refused to agree to IMF demands. As soon as Sisi took over power, he immediately agreed to these demands, and the first thing that he did was he did away with the subsidies. And we've seen price hikes now in the fuel, the energy sector, uh, in with uh, fruits and vegetables, bread, transportation. So, um, and this is directly this is directly affecting uh, low income Egyptians, of which there are many. So, uh, I think that you know anybody who tries to paint the Brotherhood as a neoliberal organization. Not to say that, I mean, I also don't think it's true that they're the most progressive organization of all time, but, you know, they're not a neoliberal group. I mean, their agenda is that has been based largely for 80 years on trying to help the common people. I mean, just to give you an example, one of the things that the Brotherhood did, the first, one of the first things that Morsi did, not in addition to solving the bread problem and the propane gas tank problem, he also increased salaries and benefits to low-income people. There were millions of Egyptians, including, by the way, police officers and teachers who are notoriously low-paid in Egypt. They, re they received systematic increases in salary as soon as Morsi within two or three months of him uh, taking uh, office. He granted national uh, health care, uh, free health care, to something like 13 million children, um, and also several million women uh, who are breadwinners uh, for their families. So these are not, you know, neoliberal policies. I think these are, you know, sort of, I think people are really reaching. Morsi clearly wanted to try and protect the common man. Uh, with his economic policy, right? So, I mean, they went in and they fixed one of the first things that the Morsi government did was they fixed the bread problem. Um, from an economical perspective, I believe under Morsi there was much more freedom uh, for investors and for people in Egypt to sort of, you know, um, try and expand their businesses. Um, there wasn't much pressure on, like, you know, the street vendors, stuff like that, people trying to earn a living in Egypt. Um, prices were, were 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 going up, but I think that was that's quite natural after the after the, after the revolution. But they were they were being maintained. We had the supply minister um, Benson Alda, um, who was spectacular in his period, which he gets absolutely no sort of recognition for what he was doing. Um, he was ensuring that bread was being done at a standard, and he was making sure that it was it was it, the price was being uh, was at the needs of the people. Egypt is a is a tourism based economy. It depends fundamentally on tourist dollars for the economy. But what we've seen is mass repression, and mass repression doesn't bring in the tourists. Tourists aren't going to want to go visit a state that has protests every day, that has imprisoned 40,000 people, that is issuing mass death sentences, and which has carried out several uh, large-scale massacres of civilians. Um, Sisi is trying to tackle some of Egypt's economic problems. He's trying to develop the Suez Canal, uh, which is something that many economists agree is a very good idea. It's something that's been needed for some time, although he's given the project over to the military. So one of the things that economists and, and political scientists have, have commented on is that during this Sisi period, and it's, it's still very early, but the military has kind of even further expanded its dominance 